Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and today we're starting a new series in our daily videos. So we've we've done a hundred on the squats, we've done a hundred on the deadlift, we've done a hundred on push-up or hands-down variations, and I'm sure you're wondering why in the world would you make a hundred videos about the same exercise? Well, there's a lot of just little nitpicky things that I like to piece together. I don't I don't want to present this all-encompassing 14 hour long video for you on a single exercise because then you gotta kind of scrub through and figure out what's going on. Uh, so we, we break it into chunks that are much more digestible, not only to uh, to for you, but for also for me for producing them. So episode number 301 we are starting the rowing uh series of exercises so we're gonna begin with one of my favorite 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 variations that everyone gets uh and that is the three point supported dumbbell row it's it's one dumbbell there's a lot of different modifiers you can use in the name um, i call it the three point dumbbell row uh, some people, I originally heard it as the lawnmower pole or the lawnmower row. So uh, if, if that's what you're familiar with, we can go for it. This variation I like to start with because the hand supported down here and the knee bent on the bench takes away a lot of the issues that we, we frequently encounter with rowing. So rowing is a, a you know, really complicated movement, honestly, to get correct, because you have to synchronize not only the, the core stabilization and timing, but also the, the scapular movement dictates a lot of what the shoulder is doing. So I can do something that kind of looks like a row, but is pretty bad for my shoulder. It doesn't really um, take into consideration the scapular movement that helps me get a lot more out of the row and helps me develop uh, upper back muscles so that I look jacked. <laughs> Um, the, the bent knee variation just kind of takes your foot out of it, takes, takes one or a couple joints, right? It takes the foot joints out of the way. So now I can start to use, you know, I can really hone in on this is my pelvis position. I just set that and then I can really focus on the upper body, the rowing movements, the thorax movements. So uh, I've kind of led you through it, but let me walk you through how I coach people on it. So uh, to start, you're going to grab one dumbbell. You only need one. You're going to put it over there on the floor or maybe on the bench in front of you. This is my coffee table bench. It's not very <laughs> soft, but it works. Uh, not that I've laid on it, I suppose. Uh, you're going to put your knee, your hand and your foot on the ground. Uh, one of the ways that I like to kind of coach the hip position is scoot that foot out a little bit and that helps coach people into loading the side that's on the bench. Helps you get weight on the arm, helps you get weight on this leg, very importantly, um, and just gives you, gives you that feedback so you know that the pelvis is in the right spot or the hip bones are in the right spot. So couple different things here. First one is push your neck away from the bench. Second one is tuck your hips. And third one is I want your shoulder or your hip to come up toward the shoulder of that, uh, that side that's on the bench. So it's just this little side bend or side crunch kind of thing going on. But I want you to make sure that you're driving it from the hip up not necessarily from the shoulder down, because if you do the shoulder down, people tend to overcorrect or over lateralize. They come over to the left too far. All I want is this subtle little tilt. Okay. Now, let's review. Push the neck away, tuck the hips, slight bend, and now I feel my ab on this side, and that's going to help secure me so that I can row away from it. Now, as you row, make sure you do not lose the ab because then I start to row with my back and with my hips instead of using my upper body muscles. If you're looking at this from a upper body exercise, upper body development standpoint, you need to make sure that you're securing the lower body first. I made this really long winded video called uh, teaching people how to row, teaching clients how to row. Um, the basic premise and, and kind of the way that I like to think about this is that the <laughs> any rowing motion is a lower body motion. It is a 
frontal plane, it is a single leg kind of exercise, right? I need to secure myself down low asymmetrically, you know, over to one side so that I can dissociate my upper body, so that I can move my upper body, so that I can row and recruit some of those upper back muscles rather than just kind of driving with my back and stabilizing with my back. So the core stuff is really important here. Now, push the neck away, tuck the hips, crunch a little bit to that side. And now from here, the fun starts. So once you set that, you got that ab, you're gonna maintain that ab ever so slightly, and then you pick up your weight, which is either on the bench or down here on the ground. You make sure you're set up again. Lots of times when people reach down here, their neck comes down and they lose what they had set up by pushing themselves away from the ground. So you gotta review those steps again. Let's take these off before they fall. So uh, grab the weight, and now I let it come all the way down so I get a little stretch in my upper back, and then I reverse it. I lead with the shoulder back first, and then the elbow follows, okay? The hand is just kind of hanging here, right? Because we don't wanna, we don't wanna do this thing, because then we're not working with gravity. We need to let it just hang straight down. Kind of like you got a string through the back of your elbow, and that's what's pulling up, but you gotta make sure you get the shoulder back. So, stretch at the bottom. <sighs> let me find my ab. Stretch at the bottom, lead with the shoulder, elbow follows. Now I'll even break people up into these steps. So I'll let people just do this first and maybe I'll move your arm and just crank the shoulder back so I get that nice scapular retraction. Once you get there, then you can let the elbow come up too just like that. And eventually, you know, you can break it up and be like a robot. I think that's a good way to start by learning it or start learning it. But after that, as quickly as possible, you want to smooth things out. So it's actually a row instead of this robot movement. Um, okay, holding that setup position is tiring. Uh, so the row is absolutely essential but this variation is just the best way to start there's it's either this or a suspension row an inverted row that i'm going to start people with because they're just the easiest to learn sometimes it's easier to learn the two arms because you get to kind of feel that pinch between your shoulder blades but what i notice is that people really mess that up and they push their upper back forward like this and I don't want that. That's destabilizing that core, that setup that we were already talking about. Uh, the, the nice part about the support is one, the hand helps cue you, helps lift that neck up toward the ceiling so that you don't get that. But also doing one side at a time allows you to kind of feed into some of the rotation. A little bit of shoulder turn is okay. You don't want to drive it completely with the shoulder and with the back like that but a little bit is okay. And I try to steer people into it because I think it helps you get in a better position, but also feel it and feel like you're doing it correctly. Uh, so that, you guys, is my favorite rowing variation, the three-point supported dumbbell row with your foot on the ground, your knee on the bench, and your hand on the bench.